Hi everyone, this is Marcus Curtis from Marcus Curtis Music. And today we're going to talk about the Cakewalk software application. Now in previous videos we've taken the Behringer and plugged it into our mixer. We have a Behringer X32. This is the X32 producer. Any Behringer will work. Any X32 Behringer will work. And uh, we plugged it into the computer. We did a firmware update. Uh, we've downloaded Cakewalk and we even recorded a bass track. If you don't already have the Cakewalk software application, I don't know why you don't, it's free. Just go online, create an account at BandLab and download it. It was really simple to do and it's an incredible app. At one time it used to be called Sonar. It was owned by Roland, it was owned by Gibson and um, it sold for $550. And now BandLab bought it, they uh, have uh, refurbished it and now they're putting it out there for free. So go get Cakewalk if you don't have it already. And what we're going to do today is a brief overview of Cakewalk. I don't know how many videos, two, three, four, but it's an involved program. We're not going to go over every detail, but we are going to do a brief overview, just enough to get you up and started so that you can record your music from start to finish. You can record uh, your, your tracks, you can mix them, and then you can master them. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, now we need to configure the X32 to work inside Cakewalk. So we're gonna start by going down, down to the Start button, right click, and we're gonna go up to Device Manager. So what we're looking for is our hardware. We wanna make sure our hardware is seen by Windows. Here's our Behringer right here. When we click on Audio Inputs and Outputs, we can see our Behringer right here as well. Now we're gonna use a Yamaha keyboard for our our MIDI interface and here we have the drivers for our, our Yamaha is connected as well. So our Yamaha is plugged directly into the computer itself. We're, we're bypassing the mixer on this. So we're going to go ahead and close that. And the next thing we need to do is start the Behringer app and we're going to connect it to uh, the computer and we're going to do the mixer to PC settings. So it's taking the settings from the mixer and copying it into the app at this point. So what we want to do now is we want to blow this up. We want to enlarge this. We're going to go over here to resize and we're going to go to uh, Windows width and Windows height. Okay, good. Now let's go to setup and our first screen is our connection screen. If you don't feel that your mixer is connected or you don't have an IP address, check your ethernet connection. Uh, you can also put the IP address in here manually and get that from the screen on the mixer itself. Okay, so moving over to the mixer settings. Okay, we have our sample rate. That's our first thing. And I'm going to switch this to 44.1K because uh, I have previous rec previously recorded projects in 44.1K. Synchronization has to do with the uh, clock setting. We're going to leave that on internal. Uh, show control. Okay, over here we have cues, and you can see over here cues is selected. If we switch to scenes, now scenes is selected. If we switch to snippets, now snippets is selected. So if you leave it on cue, and you go over here and you open up cue, you can get to any of those options right here. It's just what you want to open on the default when you click the button. Okay, cues is okay. We're just going to leave it there. Let's go ahead and go back to setup. Okay, the next one down is panning mode. We want uh, left, uh, center, and right. Okay, and we're gonna click those two. We're not gonna mute any systems. Okay, so general pop-ups, yes, we wanna confirm. And we use this to sync our new settings to the mixer when we're ready. GUI preferences basically controls uh, the preferences of our app here. So we want to, um, Always on top, we'll start over here. When we select these buttons, we want all of these things to be on top. Okay. Um, under preferences, I want to select these. Okay, select screen follows mixer. And now transport controls. You have USB 2 track or live 32 track. Now basically this is talking about the transport controls over here. Do you want these controls to con control the thumb drive of the two-track recorder, or if you have an X32 uh, live card, 
you can click on this and you can have these buttons control that X32 live card. But we don't have one of those installed, so we're going to leave it right there. Okay, going over to MIDI controller. If you have a keyboard that's plugged into your mixer and you want to use the uh, hardware connections, the MIDI in and outs on the mixer, so this is where you set that up. So you'll set up the MIDI receiving, you're going to set up the MIDI transmit, and under MIDI controller over here, you're going to select MIDI in and MIDI out. Then you're going to select the Behringer X32. And the X-USB is the X32 driver. As you put your settings in, then you just click enable. Now you're able to use a keyboard plugged into the Behringer mixer as a MIDI controller. Okay. Now the last thing we're going to go over here to the card. And uh, we're going to make sure it says 32 in and, and, and 8 out. Now you have a lot of different settings in here. You can choose 32 in and 32 out. But we want 32 in and 8 out. Think of the outputs like 8 out is like how many speakers are you running to? Are you running into 8 individual speakers? We just want 8 out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close this out. And now let's go over to the monitor. I'm going to click on monitor. And since we are going to listen back to our recorded audio through the monitors, we're going to select as our source, left and right, plus MC. That's the only setting here. Now, let's go to routing real quick. Anytime you're using the USB card in the mixer and you record uh, tracks using the USB card, to get them to play back, you're going to have to route some of the outputs of the card into the... Uh, mixer itself. So to do that, we're going to go over here to inputs. And remember, we have 32 in and 8 out. So we're going to use a bank of 8 channels 25 through 32. We have it on play right here. We're going to take this and move it over to the card 1 through 8. Let's go over here to record. And we're going to move again channels 25 through 32 over to 1 through 8 on the card. Now our routing is set up. So I believe that's everything. We're good to go. We're going to minimize this. And now we're going to start Cakewalk by Band Lab. Okay, once Cakewalk by Band Lab comes up, we're just going to get rid of the welcome screen. And we're going to go up to Edit. Click on Edit and go to Preferences. So now the Preferences box loads. And you can see that our Realtek sound card, which is our computer sound card, is what's selected to record the audio. And if you go to driver, you see the real tech is in here. Yamaha is some kind of recording type. So using the keyboard for something. We have a 24-bit selected. Now, this is where you can change a bit uh, depth. Okay. We're going to keep it on 24. Make sure 64-bit uh, double precision engine is selected. And this is where you would change your sampling rate. Remember, in the mixer, we changed it from 48 to 41. 44.1 uh, so we want to leave it on 44.1 this is the latency the latency for our sound card is 40 milliseconds and that's pretty high okay so we want to switch this so we're going to go over here to um, play back and record and we're going to change our driver type we're going to switch it from MME to ASIO so next we're going to hit apply Now we see that our driver type is selected. Okay, we're going to go back to devices here. Now notice our, our audio interfaces that are plugged in here. Okay, our Behringer is the XUSB ASIO driver. Okay, if I select a different type of driver, notice that it's grayed out. I can't select it. I, up here, I can't select it either. So if I uncheck the US 16 times 8, which is a Tascam unit, now it's it's everything is black and I can select it again. It's no longer grayed out. But now the task cam is grayed out and I can't select it. Now the reason why is because ASIO only lets you use one hardware device at a time. So you can only select one hardware device in ASIO to work as an audio interface. Since we want the Behringer, we're going to select these four right here. These are our outputs. Here's our eight out. And they're stereo, so left and right, left and right, left and right, times four. Now, here we have the inputs. Remember, we have 32 in, and there's 16 of these because they're stereo. Left and right are two inputs. We're just going to go ahead and highlight 
all of our inputs for the Behringer. Let's go up. Okay, good. Now, hit apply. I'm going to go back and check our driver settings. We notice that our Behringer is now selected as the default audio interface. Now we can use the mixer to record audio. So uh, notice our latency though is changed to 5.8 milliseconds, which is a lot better uh, than 40. Okay, so now that our mixer is set up, we need to set up a MIDI interface. So if we go to devices, we can see that here's all the hardware we have to choose from for MIDI. So if we go to instruments right here, this is where our hardware would be listed in this little box right here. So if I go back to devices and I highlight the Behringer, okay, and I select move device to the top and hit apply. Now I go back to the instrument box. Now here's our hardware. Now remember what I said about setting up uh, the Behringer. If you're going to plug your keyboard into the Behringer via the MIDI connections, make sure that under setup you have the MIDI controller set up properly. That's You want all the MIDI receive, MIDI transmit, all checked mark. You want the MIDI in and out and you want enabled. Make sure it's selected in here. Okay, now you're good to go. Okay. So let's go back. So let's go back to Cakewalk. So now that we're in Cakewalk, we're not going to use the MIDI uh, hardware inputs and outputs on the Behringer. We're going to use the Yamaha that's plugged directly in. So if I come down here to the outputs and I select the Yamaha and I select Move Device to the top and I click Apply, when I go back to Instruments, look what happens. I scroll down. You can see the Yamaha is second. Okay. If I go back to devices, I uncheck the Behringer mixer, move devices to the top, recheck the Behringer mixer, hit apply, go back to our instruments again, and now the Yamaha is in first place and the Behringer mixer is behind it. So when you're routing in for software um, synths to record with hardware, this is uh, usually connects to the first device. So let's go back to devices and we're going to just shut the uh, Behringer mixer off because we're not using it for MIDI and we're just going to make sure we select all the Yamaha devices. I'm going to move to the top, use friendly names and warn about no MIDI devices. We're going to also select all the Yamaha devices down here and hit apply. Okay, now when we go to instruments, now our MIDI is properly set up. Now we still have to do a controller surface within Sonar, so that's where this uh, tab comes in. And we're going to add a controller surface by hitting this little yellow icon here. It's going to be a simple ACT MIDI controller. And we have our Yamaha in and out. Hit OK. And there we go. Hit Apply one more time. And now our MIDI controller is set up. So we have our audio controller set up and our MIDI controller set up. The next thing we want to do is set up our VST plugins. Okay, for that we're going to go over here and highlight our VST settings. So we have one VST folder here, but there are others. If I hit scan, you'll see a box appears here and it's looking for those plugins now. And it's going to create a list. Okay, so these are things like reverbs, courses, uh, software synthesizers, all that kind of stuff. And once, once it's done scanning, it'll give you the total amount of plugins right down here. But we're going to make some changes up here. First, we're going to do for manual scan, we're going to scan uh, automatic background scan. And next, we're going to scan in sandbox. That's this little turquoise box here. And now we're going to hit apply. Okay, so now let's go ahead and find more folders. I'm going to hit add. I'll go down and just find a couple of more plugins here. Here, real quick. Okay, let's go into the uh, x86. These will be 32 bit plugins. Let's find um, Cakewalk, open that up, VST plugins, hit OK, and notice it starts scanning right away once we in, add the folder. Okay, let's find another one. Okay, we have a total of 353 plugins. 
So now the next thing we need to do is click on folder locations. Okay, once we're in folder locations, these are all the folders that uh, we can access that have sonar files in them. But this one at the top, project files, this is where we save our projects when we record them. So if you want to choose a different location, all you got to do is click on this button right here. And this little menu opens up and we can navigate down. So what I do here is I usually put subfiles in. So I have a main project. Let's go to Saturday Night Jam here. And like, for example, my Hard Rock project. I have songs that I've recorded inside that Hard Rock project. So I just highlight that, hit OK. Now this is set as the default folder. So anytime I start a new song, it's going to place that song inside this Hard Rock project folder. So let's go down to Themes. We can change the way sonar looks by changing the theme. And all we do is go over here where this drop down menu is and we can select another theme. Here's Mercury. This theme will take us back to the Sonar X1, Sonar X2, Sonar X3 days. Uh, tungsten is the new default theme. We're just going to leave it there. Okay, let's go over here and open up Cakewalk. And as the project loads, you can see the first thing to pop up is the Cakewalk start screen. Okay, there are four options over here. And if we click a uh, new project, we can click on a template to start a new project. Recent projects basically show the last 12 projects we've been working on. We can change the way these are displayed by going over here and clicking list. We're going to do our little icon view. Existing projects basically show you a list of existing projects. Remember, we selected our default folder of hard rock projects. So whatever your default folder is selected in options, this is what's going to display in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, close this out and our screen will come back. And finally, we have demo projects. You can click on a demo project and get used to how Sonar actually works. Now you can close out the string screen by going up here and hitting the X. If you want to see it again, just go over to File, and go to Start Screen, and it appears again. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this out, and we're going to go over here to File, and we're going to go to New. And in the Options menu here, we're not going to give it a name. We're just going to do a blank project. Hit OK. And this is the blank project that opens up. There's nothing in here. It's completely empty. And uh, this is the track view. To add a track, you just right click in this area and insert audio track. Fairly simple. You just pull it down if you want it bigger. This little uh, double arrow thing will collapse the project or collapse the track rather. OK. And you can control what's displayed in here. We'll show you that here in a second. Let's pull this down a little bit further. Now you can adjust how wide this is by coming over here. And you see the icon changes. And you can stretch it out. You can pull it back in like so. OK. So the features of our audio track. First, we can name this track. So you can just click in here and say drums. And now this is our drum track. You have the mute, solo, which is green and record. And when you press this, you arm this track for recording. Okay. Next is the input echo. Okay. What this does primarily is you can put an effect in here, anything you want. So we can insert an audio effect. Let's see. Let's go to pod farm delay. Okay. And now our pod farm delay comes up. And so when we plug our guitar into here, we can hit input echo and the guitar player will hear the delay, but uh, it won't be recorded. So this is a way of recording a dry signal without having to um, actually record the delay. Okay, and just to, to get rid of the effect, just right click and hit delete and the effect goes away. So down here we have clips and this we can change to clips. Uh, we can adjust audio transits in the clip or we can add automation and there's various types of automation we can add. Okay, so down here these uh, reflect the automation as well. This uh, this is will read any kind of automation we've written, and of course write will allow us to write automation, and then we have freeze. This allows us to freeze a track. So if you have like say 50 tracks down here and the processor is having trouble playing all of them back, you can come back here and freeze certain tracks. We have a volume, we have a pan left and right, we have the gain, and right down here we have the input. 
So this is where we would select our input from our Behringer mixer. Now notice this. Click on here, go down to our Behringer mixer, and look at here's our 32 inputs. Okay, so we have track one, track two, and then track one and two in stereo. Track one, track track three, track four, then track four in stereo. Okay, down here we have our outputs. Okay, so when we go to record a track, we just arm it and we select an input source from here. And that's how simple it is, really. So um, down here is our outputs, and you can see our four outputs. And these are basically stereo outs. This is one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Okay. Here we have a um, phase reversal. Okay. And this is our uh, interleave. Down here is our uh, automation track lanes, if we want to do different types of automations. And then this is our take lanes. This allows us to do punch ins so we can make subtracks. So we can set it up to do guitar solos and just record the section over and over and over again and record each take. And that's it for the um, audio track. And we can add a MIDI track the same way. We'll just go ahead and right click and select insert MIDI track. And here's our MIDI track. A lot of the same features. We have our mute solo record. Here's our input echo. Here's our clips. Here's our automation stuff, our volume, our pan. Um, okay, so we have also our MIDI interface down here. A lot of the same features. To uh, add more uh, tracks, we just simply right click. We can go down here to insert an instrument track or multiple tracks. When we do multiple tracks, we can go over here and select, let's say, five tracks. And we'll go down here and no MIDI tracks. And then we'll hit OK. And now five tracks have been added to this side. Now you can blow them up or you can collapse them or you can adjust them all to the same size by hitting the F on the keyboard. And now the uh, tracks are displayed evenly. Okay, so you can relocate these tracks too. You can go over here and you'll notice that the icon will change and you just hold down the left mouse button and you can drag it and you'll see a line appears. So you can change the order. Now our MIDI track is down here. You can also delete tracks by right clicking on the track itself and go up to delete track and the track is gone. Hit F again and blow it up. Okay, so you, we can change what's displayed within the track. So let's go ahead and make our drum track bigger and under here where it says all we can go ahead and click on all and um, we can say let's go to IO IO input and outputs now we have our Behringer source here's our inputs and our Behringer outputs okay we can change also uh, the effects if we just want the effects bend or if we just want the uh, uh, mix section the volume uh, the uh, pan or the gain now because you wind up running out of room if you get a lot of tracks in here so if you need to see a group of tracks just go over here and uh, and you can even do custom and set up your own custom display here so let's go back to all okay so this is the way that tracks are set up you can also do a folder for example let's go ahead and create a folder um, insert track folder so here's our folder just going to take this and drag it down a little bit so we can get this icon. We're going to move our folder to the top here. Here's our track folder. And we're going to call this drums. Now, let's say we have four tracks for drums. Okay, so you can double click on, a, on the first track and that highlights everything. Or you can just click a single track to highlight it. If you hold down the control button and hit individual tracks while holding down the control button, you highlight the ones that you want to select. In this case, we have all the drums selected. Right click on that and go over to move to folder. And drums appear. We can create a new folder or we'll just insert it in the drum folder. Now all of these tracks have been inserted into the drum folder and we can collapse them all. The advantage of this is that if we want to mute all the drum tracks, we can now do that. If we want to solo all the drum tracks, we can do that. If we want to record all the drum tracks at once, we can do it that way. So having everything in a track folder allows you to adjust all the drums at once. It's a really handy feature. Okay. 
Okay, this section of the track view will display all the audio clips we, we record, all the MIDI clips we record. It'll all be contained over here. Along here is the timeline, and we can change the way this is displayed. Right click and go down to Time Ruler Format changes these things. So if we wanted to change it to hours and minutes, seconds, we can do that. Also, you can see we can change it to um, uh, milliseconds or samples. Let's go up to measures, though. And so these, each one of these is an individual measure. Now we can uh, expand or contract this by down here by these plus signs and minus signs. If we hit the plus sign, notice that the measures uh, get wider. And we can also uh, expand the uh, width of the tracks by this, these, these, the plus and the minus on this side. So we can also do a quick expand by changing to this little icon, this little hourglass thing. Hold down the mouse and click, and notice it expands. Or while holding down the mouse button, we can also contract. Okay. So over here, this is called this line here is called the now time. And anytime we click within the timeline, the now time appears. This is the current part of the playback. So if we're on measure seven, we want to go to measure seven, just highlight measure seven, click, and the timeline is now on measure seven. And when I hit play, we'll start playing from measure seven on. To access the bus section, we'll just come down here. You notice the icon is going to change. When the icon changes, hold down the left mouse button and pull up. And now we're in the bus section. To add a bus, it's fairly simple. Right click and add it the same way you would add a track. When the bus comes up, we can pull it down and we can name this anything we want. So we can click in here, for example, and just make it master bus. There we go. Okay, so uh, we can take all of our tracks down here. Let's say, let's go ahead and pull the bus section down. We'll take track five. And right now it's running through our Behringer output. So we're going to go ahead and route it through the master bus. Now when this track plays back, it'll route through the master bus. Then down here, our master bus is actually going through our Behringer outputs. That way we can route all of our tracks through a master bus and we can control the volume of all of the tracks through this one bus. Okay, up here there's other options we have. We have, uh, we can uh, view options. There's um, clips options, and under here, we can control, for example, the meter behavior. And um, when we come down here, we have horizontal meters, and so we put on vertical meters. Now all the VU meters are vertical instead of horizontal. Okay, one of the best things about Cakewalk is the various ways you can view a project. Let's go down here and collapse this bus section here. And I can go over here to Views, for example, and then I can click on Console View. Console View comes up, and here is, I'm going to pull this all the way up, and here is a mixing board resembling our project here. Now, right now we're on these narrow strips. If we want to widen this, we just go over to Strips and Widen All Strips. And here's what the uh, strips look like when they're widened. Now, any one of these tracks, let's go to this one on the end. We click on this little triangle, sideways triangle, and then the Pro Channel opens up. And Pro Channel is an area where we can add uh, modules. And there's all kinds of modules that we can add into the Pro Channel itself. Okay. Uh, for example, if we want reverb, now we have reverb right down here. And then you can... Go ahead and grab it and just put it anywhere in the effects chain that you want. Okay, and to remove a module, it's fairly simple. You just right click on that module and click remove. Now you can also replace it. You don't have to remove it, but we're gonna remove this. And so we have here, we have a compressor. This is the default setup here. And we have an EQ. Now this EQ is a very good EQ. You click on the double arrow and it rolls out like this. So you have four types on here. You have hybrid, pure, E-type, e and G-type. Then you have a gloss also that you can engage. And then you have four bands and you have uh, a low shelf and a high shelf. And you just engage the shelf like so. And uh, in order for this to work, you have to turn on the Pro Channel by 
clicking the power button over here and each module has its own power button on and off okay so right now we have the EQ on and we can take this and just drag and click and just adjust this however we want and notice that it's adjusting let's turn on a high shelf here um, let's turn off turn on a low shelf there we go and we can adjust it accordingly however we want to adjust it and then when we change the type you notice it's going to look a little bit different then we can add a gloss okay so um, say this band right here the blue band here is our uh, cue it just basically uh, adjusts the shape of the bell curve this is a frequency it just shows you where you want the frequency here is the uh, volume of the frequency you want to cut or boost you can go down here and boost and you can really narrow the curve if you want to narrow it so you can do real precision things with this EQ it's, it's a really good EQ and then each channel has these features uh, here is a console emulator so you can emulate expensive eighty thousand to hundred thousand dollar mixing boards uh, the tube actually simulates a tube effect running the signal through a tube so this is a really elaborate uh, mixing board here and to collapse it we just collapse it each even the buses have their own um, pro channel okay we can also insert icons let's say the drums for example click down here to where our track icon is and our track icons load and then we can go down here to where it says drums click on that and we can just choose an icon let's say there open it up and now this is drums our inputs and our outputs are displayed right here let's say we want to run this channel to the master we'll just click down here and go to master and now this channel is going to the master bus and we do this for all channels so now when we play back all these channels we can adjust it through the master bus if I double click on the fader it brings it back to the default point so even if I'm using pans if I double click it brings it back to the default point deleting a track is pretty simple just right click on the track go down to delete track and that track goes away we can also add a bus or delete a bus as well same way insert stereo bus and there we go now we can route this bus to the master simply by clicking on the output and routing it over to the master if I go over to the master bus and right click and go down and set and click on set as default bus now the master bus has become our default bus so now when I right click and insert an audio track notice that the default bus is selected if I go over here and add another bus also the default bus is selected so by choosing a bus and making it the default bus any track or bus that we create will automatically be routed to that bus now this console view is in something called the multi dock I can go down here to where it says console I can right click and click undock and now the console view is undocked from the main project and I can pull this over to another monitor if I want let's pull it back just go over here to the corner right click and click on dock and multi dock and there it is I can control the size of the multi dock by pulling it down like so and we can see our track view behind it if I want to collapse the multi dock completely I hit D and the multi dock collapses hit D again and it brings it back I can have several different things opened up and docked into the multi dock for example if I want to do a matrix view go over here to views go down to matrix view and the matrix the matrix view has opened up and I can switch back and forth between the console view and the matrix view that's more or less how the multi dock works and I could just collapse that by hitting D anytime I want. For now, let's open it up. Let's go back to the console. Let's go ahead and raise it up. Let's say I want to make one of these buses, an effects bus. So I can click on bus B, for example. We're going to make it a reverb bus. Now let's add a reverb unit. Go up to the effects bin. And we're going to go ahead and click on insert audio effect let's use reverb and now we have a reverb unit added to the bus and so now what we can do is go over to the sends we can right click on the send and go down to reverb now the send is 
routed to the reverb. We can also go over to here to this bus, and we can make this one a delay. Go over to our channel strip again. We can right click, and we can insert a new send to the delay. And now our tracks have expanded, and we have a new uh, send going to the delay. We can insert a delay over here too. Let's go over to insert audio effect. There we go. So when we play back the audio, the signal is going to go through this channel to the master bus. And then the reverb unit is going to take the dry signal and send it to the reverb bus, which will add reverb. And that will send it back to the master bus. And we can adjust the volume of the reverb now by using the fader. The signal will also be sent from the delay uh, send to the delay bus and then route it to the master. And we can adjust the volume of the delay with this fader. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, collapse the multi-dock. Let's go over to track six. I'm going to open it up. You see down here, here's where our buses have been inserted. Okay, we can save this project anytime we want by going to the file, clicking on file, and go down to save as. And we just type our name in, example one. There it is. Okay, that's it for part one. So uh, as soon as I get these things edited, I'll get them up as soon as possible. Lots of editing going on right now. Remember to hit subscribe and remember to hit like, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.